Yeah. I'm not an archaeologist. I do not travel the far off lands where few but the local population live. I do not know any dead languages. And I definitely do not crawl through any pits filled with poisonous or any snakes for that matter. But I think I have found the holy grail of N-fed half waves. The real potable N-fed half wave. Next on 8A3K on the go. Hello, I'm Mark, AA3K, and welcome to another episode of AA3K on the go. As amateur radio operators that like to take our equipment out into the field, uh, we're always looking for that better antenna to get us on the air, be more efficient, uh, help us make more contacts in the field. N-fed half waves are extremely popular because with a relatively modest length of 65 feet to cover 40 meters, uh, they're pretty easy to set up. They give you instant band switching between uh, 40 meters and their harmonically related higher frequencies, uh, 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters, uh, and they can be easily built to handle 100 watts. The downside to an NFED half wave is that once you have it tuned up for its lowest frequency of operation, you're pretty much stuck at where the harmonically related frequencies fall. So if you tune it for the low end of 40 meters to cover CW, you're going to be at the low end of 20, 15, and 10 meters. And if you want to operate phone there, you may not have a great match having to resort to using a antenna matching unit, either external or built into your radio. And in the process of doing that, you do lose some efficiency. Well, Bob Schindler and Ron Mosley came out with the next generation of NFED half waves, the real potable NFED half wave. This is based off, if it looks familiar to you, of a chalk line winder, but with a little twist of a 49 to 1 transformer mounted to the back. And with the unique capability of being able to extend and conversely retract the radiating element and adjust the operation of the antenna to be exactly at the resonant point that you want. One, two, three. Uh, this gives a number of advantages. You can pull out the full length of the antenna and have this work on the CW ends of all the bands. And if for some reason your ground conductivity, you want to operate higher frequencies, you may even want to try the walk bands, you can crank in the length. Now, Bob and Ron do not advertise this as being uh, suitable for the walk bands. Uh, I have made some quick tests of it and have been able to get it to give a excellent SWR match on those bands, but I have not actually tried it in the field and I intend to do so before long and look forward to a new video covering that. Let's take a quick look at deploying this antenna and seeing how it works on 40 meters, 20, 15, and 10, and what you can do with the results of adjusting the antenna. Installation of the potable NFED half wave is the same as all other NFED half waves. You can either install it in a slope configuration, which is what I typically do, and it's going up to that lower branch that's sticking out up there, or you can potentially do it as a inverted V where you're putting the wire over the branch. Kind of depends upon uh, your space you have to install the antenna. This post that's holding up the transformer end is a plastic step-in fence post and you should be able to find this at any farm store such as Rural King or Tractor Supply. Okay, here we have a plot of the real potable and fed half wave uh, across its primary bands. Uh, we see very good dips on 40, 20, 15, and 10. Uh, they're all somewhat skewed to the low end of each of those bands, which makes sense in that the total length of the wire for this antenna is 65 feet which will, is very close or if not entirely on 7.0 megahertz uh, interestingly the seventh harmonic uh, does give a very nice dip within the low end of the six meter band but you are about 2.5 to 1. most radios uh, antenna matching units can handle that and will be able to give you a good match to the radio though uh, some investigation as to can you run say 100 watts through the antenna in particular its transformer at that higher frequency something to look into down the road 
specifically on 10 meters with the full length of the wire extended we see the lowest SWR just inside the CWN but if you crank it in four turns it moves the low point in uh, to just above the start of the foam band for 10 meters and if you crank it another four turns in for a total of eight you get a very good match uh, across all of the uh, most commonly used portions of 10 meters of about 1.5 to 1 worst case. 15 meters shows a similar in that uh, with a four turn crank in of the uh, wire it brings the lowest SWR to just about the midpoint of the 15 meter band and you have a worst case 1.2 to 1 across the entire 15 meter band. 20 meters looks best for the entire band if it's cranked in eight turns uh, giving you again 1.2 across the entire band so potentially a little bit of adjusting as you're changing bands in the field but turning the crank a few times one way or the other is not difficult at all and finally 40 meters show similar as you bring in the length a little bit you can get a 1.5 to 1 match across the entire 40 meter band by just turning uh, 8 meters. Now all of these tests were run in my backyard with RG8X coax, 50 feet of it, which is what Bob and Ron use to tune each antenna before they ship it. Uh, your results might vary if you're using shorter coax, really higher grade coax. Again, some more things to investigate down the road. Now, the real potable and fed half wave uh, has a number of advantages. You can adjust the resonance point by a couple of turns of the crank here. You can keep the wire from becoming a jumbled mess in your go kit by just reeling it up to put it all away. It's lightweight and I have used this antenna for four separate parks on the air activations. And I've had to make a few tweaks in the field. Uh, I did have very high SWR on 20 meters when I set up the antenna once, and I'm not sure because I had activated it previously in the same location, but the antenna in a orientation that was 180 degrees opposite to where I had set this up. And I needed to crank in the antenna about four turns to get an acceptable SWR on 20 and 40 meters. Uh, I can't say enough good stuff about the antenna. Really, the only problem I've had with it is the SO239 got loose. Uh, I spoke with Bob on the, at length on the phone, and there is no problems in voiding their warranty. They do put a, a warranty sticker in here, and they do offer a three-month warranty. Uh, but of opening up the matchbox and finding the locking ring had uh, completely unscrewed from the SO239. This is a very thick walled box and the end result is is they cannot use the star washer so I used a very tiny dab of Loctite on the locking ring and then carefully screwed it back down. I was able to do everything without having to unsolder any of the uh, connections. Bob did point out he built one of these with a lot of Loctite on that locking ring and it's so much so that it got all over the ground uh, lug and prevented a good electrical contact there. So if you're going to use Loctite to fix and hold that ring in place, use it very sparingly. I put a drop on a toothpick and put that on the threads, then uh, crank the, uh, the locking ring down. Um, there are a couple of downsides to this antenna. Uh, the first and most obvious one, while a chalk line winder is pretty ergonomically designed to hold, with the matching box, and I'm right-handed, if I hold it this way, it kind of gets a little tricky to get a good grip on it. Minor inconvenience. Uh, it only takes a couple of minutes to wind everything up and put it away. I can live with that. Um, the other inconvenience, though, is this antenna. In particular, it is based on a chalk winder, so it does have a large port that can open to fill with chalk powder. Uh, is not extremely weatherproof. Mm -hmm. Bob and Ron do not recommend leaving this out for a long-term installation. And if you wanted to do so, you probably should find a way of getting this covered to prevent water and other uh, elements from getting inside this. My 1010 is and fed half wave is much more weather resistant. And don't worry, Walt, it still finds use, particularly when I'm gonna be camping for multiple days and I don't wanna leave this out in potentially bad weather. On the plus side, it is no more difficult to set up than any other and fed half wave. 
you do have your choice of red or black wire. I usually use black wire to try to hide the antenna, but for this I went with red, and I do find that it is quite handy to see where you're, when you're walking around your own operating site that you don't walk into your own antenna. I'm going to leave a link to where you can purchase this antenna in the description below. There's no affiliation. Uh, I am just a satisfied customer. Hey, thank you. This is Mark AA3K, and why don't you check out some of my other videos?